Pet Life Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, you're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with me, Deb Wolf. And I was noticing, I was looking through things, I was organizing my office, actually. And I was looking through things, and I, I won some awards years ago. And one of the awards was for this show. And I can't believe it came with this beautiful medal. You know, like the kind the Olympics athletes wear with a red, white, and blue ribbon and big giant brass plate. It says Dog Writers Association of America. It's got a big, lovely dog on it. And then you turn it over and engraved it. It says 2009 broadcast Deborah Wolf dog talk. And that's what I won for with this show all those years ago. It even comes with a little pin I can wear on my on my clothes. And I, I just wanted to thank you all because I know it's been a long time. And my audience keeps building, and you're all so loyal, loyal like dogs. And it's just been an incredible ride, and it just keeps going. So I don't know where I'm going to wear that medal. Maybe I should hang it in my office somewhere. It really is beautiful. Maybe I'll take a picture of it and put it up with this show. It's really a gorgeous medal, honestly. And I feel like we all got it. We all won it for best pet podcast because... uh it's your topics that you send me and the guest suggestions that you send me and the questions that you send me and your interest that keeps the show so great. So thanks, everybody. This is Deb Wolf on Animal Party Pet Life Radio. And today we're not going to have a guest. We've got a guest next week. And we're going to be talking about a couple different things, matching people to, to the right dog and also some disturbing trends lately. So we're going to talk about that and how we can change that with our expert next week. But this week, I'm going to bring you some news, some interesting news, because, I mean, we're all capable of watching the news, but sometimes you don't get the pet angle. So, for example, I'm going to take you to Ukraine. Yep, that's where we're going. And, you know, there's a war on there. And, of course, you hear about it every day. You see it in the news. You see the carnage and the people and the destruction. But have you thought about the pets? Because when I was watching the footage when the war first started, I kept noticing these refugees, these people escaping the war with a dog or a cat. And I kept noticing, too, how remarkably well behaved these pets were. The cats didn't seem to be crated or caged or leashed, and the dogs were loose and in these unfamiliar settings with crowds of people in rescue situations and bunkers and bomb shelters, and yet they were all behaving so well. And I started thinking about that. How many of these people took their pets with them? So I looked up some stats and it's really quite incredible. It's between five and seven million pets. Yeah. Five and seven million pets have left the Ukraine. Oh my gosh. That is a lot of pets. Holy. Israel alone thinks they took 2.5 which is just an incredible amount for a small country. There were, there's people from other countries too. So from, for Israel's numbers and they're tracking numbers really well, uh, they have some stats published. They have 10 to 15,000 refugees, 13,000 are Ukrainian and there's 13,000 are Ukrainian, 10 to 15,000 are from Moldova. So they're getting people from other places. 1 million in 1989 came from Russia and yeah, there's so many. There's 26,000 Russian Jews who've come over since the start of this problem. And there's 35,000 people who've come over waiting for paperwork. So you can imagine. Now, add all that, add up all that, the people in the waiting and the people in the facilities and the people in limbo and the people being cared for in foster home situations and throw in some pets. And <laughs> that just makes it incredible. The why, you know, I, all the time you think of people being saved from situations, being forced to leave their pets. But in this particular conflict at this time in history, it seems like we've finally gotten through our heads that pets help people heal, that pets aren't just furniture, that they are part of the family. 
And that these children, especially, but families escaping horrors and leaving relatives behind, need their pets with them. So I think it's an incredible thing that so many pets, five to seven million pets, have left the Ukraine and are finding themselves in different places all around the world, representing what it's like to be a rescue animal for real. So, yeah, if... uh if you're able to and you know some Ukrainian refugees or you have contacts somewhere in your neighborhood and you can share some dog food or cat food or pet supplies, I'm sure they need it. Give it a thought. <laughs> so, yeah, I just find this so interesting. Okay, so we're going to switch news items a little bit and uh, go to something that's been in the news here up in Vancouver. Now, I told you about this a while ago. So on January 23rd, a dog walker on the North Shore Mountain, so that's just a suburb of Vancouver, someone walking in a park forest area where dogs are allowed off leash, was walking a few dogs, two big dogs. And for some reason, this couple who were also walking dogs off leash got annoyed with her. And the man actually assaulted her. He hit her, he pushed her, he attacked her, he knocked her down. He's just lucky it wasn't me because my dogs would not have put up with that. I don't know why her dogs put up with it. He's lucky. But at any event, uh, the police are looking for this guy. So if you were there, if you witnessed it, please call the North Shore RCMP and report what you saw. All right. So something else in the news that's pretty different, complete opposite, but also happened in Vancouver. And I'm sure in cities all around the world, things like this happen. And it's just so hard to understand. But this guy was out walking his small dog and he didn't have his wallet or his ID with him because he was just walking his dog early in the morning doo -doo 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 -doo, going for a little pee break like you do downtown Vancouver. And it was actually his friend's dog doing her a favor, walking the dog. Elijah Barnett is his name. And he was mistaken. The police thought he was someone else. They thought he was a person they were trying to catch. And so they jumped him. And I mean, he was cut. He was beaten. He Rubber bullets were shot at him. He was arrested. Hours later, they confirmed it was the wrong guy. There's really no resemblance. They showed on the news the picture of the guy they were looking for and the guy that they <laughs> beat up. And there's no, they don't look anything alike. And so now this innocent man wants more than an apology. He's going for justice. But I mean, it's just so alarming. I can't imagine being up in the morning with a little dog going for a little walk. And all of a sudden you are taken down by a bunch of huge men and thrown in jail. And I mean, what happened to the dog? Where did it go? This is downtown. There's cars everywhere. I mean, the whole thing is just frightening. But I do hope he gets his justice. And if anyone saw that, well, go to Facebook and look up Elijah Barnett, because I'm sure he'd like to hear from you. All right, everybody. So a couple of strange things. One more strange thing that happened in Vancouver, and then we're going to go to break. One more strange thing. And this doesn't have to do with the police. And fortunately, the shopping mall involved did the right thing. But basically, a woman with a therapy dog went shopping, as you do, went to the mall, was walking around. All of a sudden, her dog starts to freak out. He's panicking. His jaw is kind of closing and opening and closing and opening and like chatter, 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 click, 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 click. And he's shaking and he's passing out. His name is Benny. He's a five and a half year old dog and he's big. And he was basically screaming and screeching and barking, losing it completely. A therapy dog, super chill, calm dog normally. So she figured out that he was actually getting electric shocks from the pavement. She took him to the vet emergency. They got him all fixed up. It was a few hundred dollars. And at least the uh, Park Royal Mall in West Vancouver did the right thing. They paid her bills. And they confirmed that it was a ground wire that was broken outside underneath the pavement and uh, they fixed it. But it is something to consider because it could happen anywhere, anywhere in the world. Electricity travels and your dog is barefoot. So if you see something like this going on with your dog, react quickly. Get him out of there. Get him to the vet. Okay, we're going to go to break and come back on Animal Party with Pet Life Radio. Stay tuned. How many of you have pets? 
my hands raised. Now think about how lucky you are to have such a sweet little pet in your life, and that pet is lucky to have you too. But unfortunately, there are countless pets out there that don't have a home to call their own. However, Bob's from Skechers is trying to change that. So we developed Bob's for dogs and cats to help pets in need. With every purchase of adorable Bob's footwear or fun, stylish apparel, or even the cutest Bob's pet accessories, Skechers makes a donation to Petco Love to help save shelter pets. And with your help, we've already saved the lives of over 1 million pets and raised over $7 million. So while you're getting style and comfort with features like Skechers' famous memory foam cushioning, you're also helping to save an adorable pet in need and helping another lucky owner be connected with a future best friend and companion because happiness is having a loving pet by your side. Find Bob's at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, select pet co-locations, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, you're listening to Animal Party on Pet Life Radio. And I've been noticing lately that on TV, almost every commercial has a pet. It doesn't matter what they're selling. Even if they're not selling cleaners and they're not selling pet toys, they're selling something completely different, like a bank (laughs) or, you know, like nothing to do with pets at all. Life insurance for humans, retirement homes. I mean, there's a pet in there. And sometimes it irritates me because I feel like they're being sneaky. You know, they're they're kind of using our reaction to this adorable pet to make us like their product, even if their product has nothing to do with pets. It feels a little bit sleazy, but other times they get it so right. So there's this commercial for a bank in Canada called CIBC. And uh, I don't know if it's real or a spoof. I really can't tell from the commercial. But basically, they show you a bunch of stressed out people going to the bank. And then they show you their new pet staff. Basically, when you go to the bank to negotiate a loan or talk about a mortgage or whatever, you get a pet to sit with you. And it's so funny to watch this commercial. You see the guy with the poodle and the girl with the cat and stroking the cat or the pet or whatever as they're talking about their financial problems and getting their solutions. And it probably would work. So if it is a spoof, I think they should reconsider and actually employ these pets. But what a great idea when you're so stressed out to have a dog or cat there with you. What a great idea. And the dogs and cats seem really happy about it too. So I wanted to give a shout out there. I also see things on TV. We're going to do a little bit about TV today that I just find so frustrating. I want to shake the people. So when I'm flipping through the television, you know, through shows, usually I'm looking for something more like a documentary, but sometimes I get on junk food television and there'll be a dog or a cat in the scene and I'll stick with it for a few minutes And usually what I see is a doggy don't, a thing that you shouldn't do with your dog. And I just want to shake the people. So I was watching TLC, 90 Day Fiance Pillow Talk, which is a show about people who fall in love across the world and then have to go and marry within 90 days. And then they have another show, Pillow Talk, where past couples and family members kind of comment on the show. They sit and watch it and make sarcastic, funny comments about it. So this was one of those cases. So there they are, Magda and Stephanie, mother and daughter, sitting, watching the show, commenting on the show. And they've got this beautiful board of fruits and nuts and all these foods, got it all laid out on this coffee table for the two of them. And the whole time they are telling the dog, no, the dog is allowed. Oh, more on that in a second. <laughs> dog is allowed. And they're telling the dog, no, no, you can't eat that. Don't eat that. Over and over and over as the dog keeps rating the food. He keeps sticking his nose in their food. He keeps rating the food off the coffee table. He's eating whatever he wants. It could be healthy. It could be unhealthy. Doesn't matter. He's eating whatever he can reach. <laughs> and they keep scolding him, but they do nothing about it. They don't lift the food up. They don't remove the dog. At one point, Somebody throws a toy for him. And of course, he's a lab. He brings it back, drops the toy and keeps eating. The whole thing is like a lesson in what not to do while you're watching TV. So what they should be doing is keeping the food away from where the dog can get it if he's already got this habit. Number one, you could tie him up somewhere. You could 
in a nice way, like with a, a long leash that allows him some freedom and a bunch of bones and toys that he loves on a mat or a dog bed that he loves. Teach him a new habit that he's going to be over there when you're using the coffee table for a big spread of food. Or you could put him in his crate if he likes his crate or put him in another room or have the food higher up. So that's the first thing. Stop this free feed buffet. Second thing is when you say no, make your words mean something. If you say no, as the mom did, Magda kept saying, no, no, you can't eat that. Don't eat that. As the dog is munching and chewing and continuing to eat, you're just teaching him that you don't matter. What you say doesn't matter. When you say no, it means nothing. So well done, Magda. Dog's never going to listen to you now. So when you say no, make it actually happen. Push his face out of your food, at least, and make him sit at least a little bit away. Because otherwise, you're just teaching him over and over again to disobey you. And that's not going to work out for you. Okay. And when you play fetch with a lab, he will bring it back. So you don't throw something as a distraction thinking, okay, I don't want to play with you right now. So go get this toy. Unless the toy is something he can chew and play with that will motivate him for a long time. And there's so many great toys out there. So they could have bought one of those toys where you put the little food inside and it's like a puzzle and the dog has to use his brain to figure out where the food is and get it. Instead of begging and being rude and stealing and eating whatever he wants and filling up, he's actually behaving himself and he will be fascinated by this toy. So if you've got a lab that has bad food habits, this is what you need to do. Get one of those toys and then set it up so he gets used to the idea that when you're eating, he's with his toy. And he'll be he'll be so interested in that. You won't have a problem. Okay, everybody, we're going to go to break. And when we come back, we'll talk more on Animal Party on Pet Life Radio with me, Deb Wolf. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet Hello. We're back at Animal Party with Pet Life Radio. And well, let's see. We're going to stick with TV for a little while because I find this very interesting. So back to junk food TV, Married at First Sight. Here's another one of these shows, okay? They don't get to see each other. They have to get married. <laughs> and they throw these couples together. And sometimes, this is the part I like, sometimes they have pets. You know, the guy has a dog, the girl has a cat, or they both have dogs, or they both have cats, and they have to make it work. So this one guy ends up with a woman who's actually a dog breeder and has four dogs, and he doesn't even like dogs. That's interesting. And uh, <laughs> there's um, so much that goes on with this. In, in one case, there's a rule about only a certain amount of dogs in the apartment that they're supposed to share. She has one, he has two, so they have to make a choice. So lots of animal... Uh, intrigue in this married at first sight show. And if the dogs don't get along, well, the couple's not going to stay together. In one case, a couple seasons back, the guy gave up his dog and then they didn't stay together. So oh, that's terrible. But this is about Rocky. Now, Rocky is a dog that's very, very hyper and hasn't been trained at all. And the woman who owns him admits that she's a first-time dog owner, doesn't know what she's doing. And the new husband is actually very tolerant. <laughs> and I like the way he describes the dog. He he says, well, you know, he's, he's an okay dog. I just don't like it when he bites people. Oh, really? You don't like it when he bites people? <laughs> okay. Yeah. You don't want a dog who bites people? Come on now. I mean, and the new wife, her response to that was, well, he's not your dog. Oh, 
Oh, that now that's going to go well. We're going to have a great marriage if that's how. Well, he's not your child. He's not your son. He's not your daughter. I mean, come on. You're going to have to share this dog. You're going to have to get over this. And do you really want a dog that bites? Oh, my goodness. What a situation. So they get a trainer in. And within two minutes, this dog who's been a total terror absolute destruction, doesn't shut up. One of those dogs becomes super attentive, really well behaved, is actually the kind of dog that needs direction, that needs leadership. Sometimes the worst dogs are the best dogs. Those dogs you see on TV that um, that do all the tricks and perform so well, those dogs, if you left them in a house where nobody gave them any direction, they'd be a nightmare. They need constant commands, direction, exercise, routines. That's what smart dogs need. So this dog, Rocky, he may or may not have ADD, but what he definitely has is a really eager spirit and a willingness to learn, great memory, great responses, brilliant little brain. He needs commands. If you don't tell him what to do, he'll find his own fun and you won't like it. <laughs> it'll be heckling. It'll be rude. It'll be disturbing people. Anything to get their attention. Any attention is better than no attention for a dog like that. So I'm so glad they got a trainer and they got on the right path. So I want to tell you about The Littlest Hobo, which is a very old Canadian show. And then it was remade. It's still pretty old, though. And it's extremely child friendly. It's the kind of show that there's absolutely nothing sexual or rude of any kind in this show. It is family approved. And it, you know, you know, because I grew up with it, it still makes me tear up. I just, I used to get so upset when I was watching as a kid because the idea is this German Shepherd dog finds a family or a situation that needs resolving and he goes and he helps the people. And when the situation's fixed, he moves along right? He goes on to his next adventure. And as a little girl, that used to upset me so much that he would leave, still gets to me. But other than that, <laughs> there's nothing sad about the littlest Tobo. So I was watching it the other day. It was a 30-minute episode. And I thought to myself, am I really going to watch this whole episode? I mean, really, I've got other things to do. March break is coming. Camp Good Dog's getting busy. I got work. But he got me. The German Shepherd got me. He's such a beautiful dog. So I started watching and I decided to make a list of all the tricks this amazing actor dog did in one episode. It's quite something, actually. So we start the episode. It's it's one where, well, I'll just tell you all the things he did. First, he jumps up on someone's lap. Then he retrieves a book. Then he paws someone's lap. Then he retrieves glasses a pair of glasses and brings them to somebody. He climbs up a fire escape ladder and crawls through a window. He jumps up a garage window. He gives warning barks. He does a window entry. Then he opens a dresser drawer. Okay, this is all in one episode. <laughs> like, I'm getting tired. If this is me, I'd have already had enough. Okay, then he retrieves pension checks. Now, th in this episode, there's a bunch of old people, elderly people living in a home or are being ripped off by the people who run the home. So he's solving the problem, right? He goes and the pension checks have been stolen from these elderly people. And he goes and he finds them and, you know, without gumming them up and destroying them or getting them all wet or shredding them, he carries these delicate pieces of paper, pension checks, all the way to where he's supposed to. Then he carries a suitcase. Actually, that's the one time in the whole show where he looks really happy. Like he's thrilled to be asked to carry a suitcase. You could see him marching around and it's obviously empty, but it's supposed to be full. <laughs> and, and he's very happy with the suitcase carry. Then he takes an old fashioned key out of an old style door with his mouth. He takes it out. And so he locks the bad guy in. You see, he hides in a bush. He pulls a wagon full of firewood. He pulls a rug. He jumps into a car and he honks to give warning with his paw and he holds his hand on the horn. He holds it and holds it and holds it till the police come. He pulls a rope for a pulley. He removes a sign from a bulletin board. And at the very end, he turns and he pauses. And when the elderly people stop talking, he leaves to go on to his next adventure. Man, that's a lot of work for a dog in one episode. A lot of work. What a phenomenal dog. So I've talked before on the air about how sometimes 
animals are taught to do things on TV or for movies, and then someone like me gets called to kind of detrain them, untrain them, to get them over the training. So they've been taught some adorable trick, maybe like this one dog I had to train. <laughs> he was taught to climb up on expensive sports cars, stand over the slightly ajar sunroof, and urinate. Yeah, that's what he was taught. That was for a scene. And they did it over and over and over till they got it right. Well, forevermore, this dog would seek out sports cars, sunroofs. He would find a sunroof that was open and that's what he would do. So he was scratching people's cars. He was running away. He was escaping. He was going in traffic and he was urinating on cars. Not good. And I had to work with him to get him out of all those habits. Yeah all those habits. And I think about that sometimes when I see children on TV who've been taught to do something really bratty or mischievous for attention. I think, oh no, what's that kid going to be like at home? How long is it going to take to teach that kid not to do that terrible habit? Oh, it can be difficult, but um, they say it takes six weeks to three months to get rid of a bad habit. So it depends on the habit. It's biting your nails or smoking. It might take longer if it's if there's an addiction component. But basically, it takes months. So this dog had to be kept on a leash and away from sports cars and sunroofs for months. And he had to be controlled around them as well. So away from random encounters where he could do his old habit that he got rewarded with on the set. And also controlled circumstances, lots and lots of times around sports cars where he doesn't get to climb on it. He doesn't get to pee on it. Eventually, we sorted it all out, <laughs> and the dog, the dog can now exist politely without causing the owner extreme embarrassment and huge bills. But it's definitely something to think about. So be careful what you laugh at, right? When you have your puppy or your cat, and it does something really bratty that's hysterically funny, if you laugh at it and you think it's great and you praise it, you're going to see it again. So you got to make sure you don't give that message for things you don't want to see again. You can have a very bratty dog, that's for sure. So that's it for now from the world of TV. I will keep paying attention for all of you. One thing, oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to tell you about. Jeff Corwin was on uh, CNN and he was talking about bears. And I was so disappointed because I tuned in just to hear this. <laughs> and there was this big encounter with bear and people and so they got him on to talk about it, and he didn't even say anything. He basically just joked about the idea that, oh, you just have to be faster than the other person, which, you know, what if you're walking with your wife or your child? Are you really going to throw them at the bear? Come on now. What are you supposed to do? Well, there are bear safety rules and things you can do. So actually, there's so much. There's so much to unpack. I'm going to talk about bears and moose on our next show, because we've run out of time, I just realized. And I do want to give this topic a fair coverage. But sometimes moose attack because they're mating. Sometimes they attack to protect their young. You never want to get in between a mama moose and her babies. And the same is true for bears. You never want to get in between the grizzly and her babies. But the behavior is different. When And I'm going to go over that all on the next show because it's just too much to cover. What happened was there was a standoff with a moose and a snowmobile and CNN covered it, but they really didn't give you any tips for what to do the next time it happens. So next show, I'll be giving you tips for what to do when you encounter a moose or a bear because it's not that uncommon, especially with people snowmobiling and skiing and enjoying the mountains. You may encounter these animals and you need to know what to do. So catch me on my next show, and we'll talk all about it on Animal Party Pet Life Radio. Be good to your animals. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.